analyze the, the, the different research uh, works. Uh, my, the focus of the office is in the digital 3D, in the virtual reality, and also uh, we organize a lot of uh, intensive courses and training for people around the world. Uh, this is a group from Mexico, people from Brazil, Portugal, Poland, Ukraine, Be Beirut, Japan, Colombia, different groups come to the to the office. And normally we have a uh, learning orthodontic uh, uh, around the world. We have groups like this. This is the group of uh, Thailand. And after the first course in Thailand, we have a second uh, course uh, Taipodont in Thailand. And in the after the people from Thailand come to, to Spain and come to my office. What is the problem with the coronavirus? Oh, okay, the, we have a huge problem with the coronavirus. And maybe what is the, 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 the future of our profession? Is possible to use only aligners in the future, or is possible to combine aligners with brackets and wires? This is a very interesting question. Remember this most of the techniques that we are using today, Roth, Andrews, Tweed, TPH, was created many, many years ago, in the time, in the time of the Rolling Stone. This is the car we used it many, many, many years ago in Spain. And nowadays change a lot the, the, the car. We have now electric cars and you can see now how uh, are the rolling stone, the change of the face and the change of the age. Okay, we have two possibilities. One possibility is to do classic orthodontic, is the, the classic orthodontic, and, and the other possibility is to use aligners, Invisalign, or even expensive treatment. We have, we development the DSQ a technique, this is the our orthodontic technique, and we mix the aligners with the classical orthodontic. For the reason we have the protocols of diagnosis and protocols of treatment. And we use the strywire low friction system for the brackets and the metallic uh, wires, orthodontic microimplant system, eruption and proprioception guys and aligners, and the use of digital and functional appliances with another company. The first company is Rocky Mountain Orthodontic from Denver. The second is Theacom from Spain. And the third and the fourth is OrthoPlus and Alinea Dent from Spain. You see, we nowadays we are using the gum metal. Gum metal is a new alloy and present the big advantages to use only one, um, one alloy for all treatment is possible to treat a patient with two or three one with two or three wire is enough one wire is 16 or 18 and the rest of the treatment is 90 by 25 gum metal and with only one allow alloy is possible to do all the treatment we development a, this, a new system of orthodontic micro, micro implants. And the, a, we are talking now today about the, the third part of our uh, technique. And this part is the aligners in mixed dentition. Okay, <clears throat> we are now launching to the market our micro implants, this is in, intraoral micro implants and the extraoral microimplants. Uh, you can see here the, the catalog of the brochure of the, our microimplants. It's a very nice brochure to explain how to put each microimplant in different cases with a box, with a, it's a surgical box with the screwdriver and the different types of microimplants. And in the other uh, hand, we development the strike wire low friction technique with the synergy bracket and different uh, wires. Nowadays, we are working with a, a close friend of mine. This is the owner of the Ortho Plus company. 
and I am the European Academy uh, Director of the European Academy Alinea Land Academy. And we um, wrote different articles. Uh, unfortunately, the articles uh, are in Spain in the Dental Tribune International. Okay, this is about the how, when to start the treatment, what is the treatment, what is the best the time to start the treatment, the best age. Okay, I have the YouTube uh, channel with different um, in a Spanish presentation and videos, but I, I have two or three presentations in English. Okay, this is the evolution of the orthodontic. Remember, first was angle, second was the, the technique of tweeth with the strike wire with the strike wire by Larry Andrews. Prof. Dr. Ricketts was one of the most uh, spectacular orthodontics in this in the last century. Uh, in the introduced the computer in our clinic, introduced the uh, the fixes uh, appliance treatment in mixed dentition. They come in, in uh, I like very, very much in mixed dentition, the philosophy of bioprogressive uh, technique using the combination between the coagelis and the utility arch. In the 80s, uh, Roth uh, uh, introducing or in the history of orthodontic, the idea of functional occlusion, the new the development of the uh, new brackets, the new systems in orthodontic like MBT. In 2000 was, was very important, the, the concept of the evidence-based orthodontic and the introduction of super wires, the digital orthodontic, and in the future will be the, 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 the development, uh, the development of the uh, the, the development of the different uh, memory shape polymers, the memory polymers to uh, more to create a more effective appliance using alliance. Okay, and this is the this excuse me. Okay, and we are talking about the the eruption proprioception guides. The idea of the eruption proprioception guides is very simple. In the, in the late mixed dentition, in the moment when we are, um, uh, when we, this is a eruption, the K9 and the first molar and the second molar and the second premolar is a crucial moment to adjust the mandible in class one. For the reason, if you can see here, it is very important the, that the K9 get to class one. When the canine get a class one, the mandible is close to class one. Unfortunately, when the, the, in the this is the situation, when the mandible, the upper canine and even the second premolars and the rotation of the first upper molar produce the, the dental class two and the canine in relationship with the inclined planes reduce this contact in class two between the upper and the lower K9, the big problem is this, the mandible move backward. For this reason, it's very, very important the relationship between the eruption of the premolars, the upper K9 and the second premolar in relationship with the TMG. For this reason, it's very important the control of the eruption of the, of the, the of this, this, uh, this. For example, in many cases like this, we put uh, quagelis or we put something very simple to produce expansion and to correct the crossbite of the lateral incisor. And you can see how is the result uh, years uh, after of this first phase of treatment without another for this reason, it's very, very, very important to intercept the malocclusion, to put appliance in this type of patients very early, to do short, very early treatment. 
Okay, we work in, in Orto Plus in a, in a new dimension of the digital orthodontic. In this uh, screen, you can see a patient. Uh, we take in this patient an intraoral scanner of the teeth. Second, we combine the intraoral scanner of the teeth with the CBCT, with the CBCT of the patient. And you can see the real, real situation of the crown, real situation of the root of each tooth. And this is the real bone, alveolar bone and basal bone according with the CBCT. Okay, this is a big advantage of, you can see the vestibular part of the occlusion of the patient. You can see the lingual part of the occlusion of the patient. It's possible to do a setup or even the mock-up. This is another patient okay? and the, the other patient is possible to analyze and for example, this upper canine, okay, or this upper canine, we can you, we make the aligner. You can see the, the here the attachment. We make the aligner here in this patient, and you can see the real bone in the CBCT, the real roots of each tooth, and the crown of this. For the reason it's possible to do and it is possible to do a, a guide for the eruption of this tooth. Okay, this is the 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 uh, the, the old-fashioned uh, uh, computer 3D setup of this of this patient. This is more or less six months ago. Now we have a new uh, a new design for the for the aligners. Okay. And you can see how it's working, okay? Closing the space step by step. This is the number of the liners, okay? A step by a step, closing the space and closing the diastep. Another very interesting research in the Department of OrthoPlus Research Department is the biomechanic of the element, the metal and the finite element method. And this is to analyze the center of the resistance and the center of the rotation and the morphology of the root of the molars. The same when we are studying the effect of the orthodontic tooth movement with the aligner. You can see here the aligner, okay, the aligner and the effect of the aligner, in the effect of the aligner in this tooth and the neighbor and the close tooth. And this is another advantage is very, very of this. We are using uh, aligners, for example, in adult patient, and we, ana we analyze the type of aligner. You can see here, this is the aligner for the stabilization of the appliance. This is for retention of the appliance. And this is the aligner to produce a little bit extrusion. And at the same time, this part is to produce protrusion of this lateral incisor. Okay. This is the studies about the attachment, about the rotation of this attachment. And this is about the uh, anterior proprioception, guys. The idea is this, is to avoid the that the eruption of the canine produce the protrusion of the upper canine and produce the extrusion of the upper canine, get the occlusion in class one and put the, the mandible clo uh, as, as close as possible to uh, in the class one relationship. Okay, the eruption, uh, the eruption, uh, the eruption pattern of the patient produce a occlusal proprioception. The occlusal proprioception change the position of the mandible and the TMG and produce a change uh, in the growth of the mandible of the patient. For this reason, if we change the eruption, the eruption pattern of the patient with the uh, proprioception uh, guys, 
is possible to change the, the, the growth of the patient, only put appliance in the last part of the mixed dentition. This is a new research and the idea is very simple. It's like it is. This is a, a cross bite. Another problem of this patient is the eruption of the upper canine and the lower canine. And we put in this patient different types of anterior uh, the, uh, uh, the aligners in this moment to uh, resolve or to treat these problems with this. The second um, phase of the treatment or the second phase, the second aligner is to, to put the upper canine in class one, remove this second lower uh, temporary molar, remove this, move the premolar to distal, move the canine a little bit distal to align the incisor and to produce the protrusion of this incisor. Okay. <clears throat> this is my colleagues in my office. In this moment, <laughs> we are putting the, the, the we put the, the composite, okay, here, the attachment in the, in the, in the patient. In this patient, the treatment is in mixed dentition. For this reason, it's very important to put or to increase the number of attachment and the site of the attachment at the level of the molars and at the same time put attachment in the, in the upper and the lower incisor to get a good retention of the liner because the liner is preparing for the eruption of the second premolars in the lower second premolars and in the upper for the eruption of the canine and the second upper canine. Okay, this is a very, very important slide because this is the first patient. This is a research project, very interesting. And we, this, we, uh, this patient was the first patient that we treated with this method. You can see here the, 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 the part of the, of the plastic Okay, to put inside the canine, we reproduce the shape of the canine in the in this part of the of the of the liner. In this case, is the same. Okay, now is the is, this is a is a part to put the premolar, and you can see here very nice how the canine in this case in the left. And the, and the right canine came to the uh, space from the canine inside of the liner. The same here, okay, the same here, and the same is for the second premolar. In, in the second premolar, it's possible even to correct the rotation of the premolar, okay, before to get the premolar, the occlusal line. What is the, the, the idea? It's very simple. With a very, with a very simple treatment with a, a bite block of acrylic or with a liner, we change the occlusal proprioception. The occlusal proprioception is the peripheric comparator of Petrovic. This is the idea of about the servo system, about Petrovic. What is the idea? The most important is the occlusal proprioception. Change the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, and the trigeminal nerve produce afferences to stimulate the TMG and the muscle. Change the muscle of the, the dynamic of the, of, the, of the mandible, and at the same time, change the occlusal proprioception. For the reason is a very ecological idea, ecological idea about orthodontic. Why? Because we are using the eruption of the of the of the patient, and we are uh, using the spontaneous orthodontic tooth movement of the patient and the eruption forces. For the reason is possible to change the growth of the patient only with this very simple method. We have to diagnose the plan of treatment. For example, in this patient, 
Now it's time to eliminate the second upper temporary molar and the lower second temporary molar. We extract the temporary molars and we design, we design in the setup, in the digital setup, we design the, uh, the, the, the distal movement of the, prim, of the first premolar, the lower first premolar distal movement, and we have at the same time to control the rotation of the second upper and the second lower premolar. You can see here the next step is to produce another aligner with it to get down the canine and the first premolar. And this is the idea. It's very, very simple. I don't have, because this is a very, something very, very new, something very, very new. And I don't have a lot, a lot of cases, unfortunately, because I don't, I, I, I have this, the, in this time with the coronavirus is a huge problem to see the patients, but you can see only using these very simple aligners, simple aligners, only in the in the mix, in the late mixed dentition, only in a short period of the of the, the eruption, you can see this. This is the eruption of the canine with this attachment, with this vertical attachment. We move this tal this canine with this attachment we move this remove this molar and now we get the space to produce a distal movement of the first premolar and to get the molar in class one it's very important in this moment to get to put a, a, um, attachment in the incisor and also to put the attachment in the upper and the lower uh, molars. <clears throat> okay, one more. Okay, uh, very, very simple. This is only, only, only two, three months of evolution of a patient. We, in this case, the, okay, decide, extract, this pre, this temporary molar to move this premolar uh, backward okay open the space for this k9 and align the four incisors okay very very simple treatment very simple okay very simple this is in, in uh, you can see the effect the superposition for example this is a very common patient in Galicia, in my region, a patient with a, with a retrusion, a little bit retrusion of the mandible in class two, uh, severe overjet, big, big teeth, big incisors, bolton discrepancy. What is the, the best treat? What is the risk of this patient? I would like to treat this patient as early as possible because there is a high risk of fracture, okay? For the reason my first uh, treatment is doesn't work very well if a functional appliance, doesn't work very well. Doesn't work very well to put four brackets and headgear. Doesn't work very well, maybe, maybe, in this patient, maybe the best treatment uh, with functional appliance is a twin block, because with twin block, you have the advantages to put a screw in the upper, another screw in the lower, and to produce a W expansion in the upper and in the lower, and, and create the space to move backward the upper inside. Okay, maybe, maybe. In my office, the best appliance is this the C modeler. The C modeler is a very simple appliance from was invented for, for a doctor from Spain, Dr. Cervera. It's a very simple. We have a, like a silicone, eh, like, a, a, like a splint with a silicone uh, with a high pool, okay, or mix a high pool. What is the, 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 the the C modeler produce a very quickly, quickly, quickly uh, lingual movement of the upper incisors. 
this is the first advantage. The second advantage is, is this. Con it produces very good control. We have a problem. We have a very good control of the uh, growth of the maxillary. And what is our idea? This is a, was very nice. Our idea was introduce, introduce this. Uh, after the retrusion of the central incisor, we start with the use of the aligner. The use of the aligner is only to get, or to produce expansion, to get the lateral incisor forward, to control a little bit the problem of the molars. In the lingual part, we put the conventional lingual arch. And now it's time to remove for the pulpitis, for a pulpectomy, we prefer to uh, remove the, for, the first uh, temporary molar in the left, okay, and prepare the, the aligner for the second, for the, excuse me, for the first premolar, for the eruption of the first premolar, okay, with the attachment. And you can see, because we don't have more, more photos because uh, is very uh, start the, the, the treatment in 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 the summer, and you can see here. Okay, now it's time to the eruption of the premolar, and this is the part to receive the premolar to adapt the premolar to the vacuum of this part of the appliance. Okay, and you can see the use now as a retention. The patient is using. The aligner. The concept is a little bit different. When you are mm, using aligners in oval patient, you are using the aligner in the same way that the uh, conventional orthodontic. One tooth is with rotation. You put the aligner to try to treat the rotation of this tooth. The lateral incisor is in lingual. You try to move the lateral incisor to forward. Here is a little bit different. The idea is to treat with conventional orthodont orthodontic. In many cases, the, the, the incisor and the molar and the aligner to the objective of the aligner is to get the, the during the eruption, the, the, the tooth to the proper position and to correct in the same moment during the eruption, the, the, to put in the correct position, the tooth. A class three patient with class three patient with anterior crossbite, okay, with anterior crossbite with protrusion of the lower incisors, okay. Check the patient in centric relationship, and it's a very simple case. But what is the problem of this patient? The problem of this patient is the muscle, the muscle of the upper lip, reduce the the the, the collapse or the frenum of the growth of the maxillary and the the and the, the lower incisor okay the in, the inclination of the lower incisor increase the cross bite what is the main objective the main objective is the proprioception line what is proprioception line is this is the ideal line for the eruption of the upper incisor Okay, what is the best appliance? The best appliance, when the patient presents a, a muscular problem, the treatment is a muscular treatment. When the patient presents a dental problem, the best appliance is a dental treatment. Okay, in this case, the main problem of the patient is a functional problem. For this reason, in this case, we put the Frankel appliance with the screw, with the, the shields in the upper to eliminate the pressure of the upper lip, these wires, these wires to produce this produce protrusion of the upper incisor and this wire to produce the retrusion of the lower incisor. Check the, check the functional appliance, in my opinion, is very important for the expansion of the patient, it's very important how to adjust the shields 
of the of the lateral shields of the functional appliance of the Frenkel appliance to the to the to the mucosa, okay, and to the oral mucosa to produce the traction of the periosteum. Okay. Okay. And okay, you can see the is on the effect of the Frankel, the spectacular effect of the Frankel in the upper incisor, in the lower incisor, very important the intrusion of the lower incisor, the retroposition of the mandible, everything changed in the mouth and the face of this patient. For this reason, I love the functional appliances. I love the functional appliances, and I don't understand the people who talk bad, not very well, about the functional appliance. For this reason, very important. Protrusion of the upper incisor, very important. Forward movement of the A point. And now it's time of eruption, proprioception, guys. We put, um, we put um, different types of uh, here. You put different types of attachment here, attachment for the retention of the appliance. And the use of the appliance in this moment is in passive use, only to adjust this posterior open bite, only to align the upper incisor and to get a good relationship. For the reason, now it's time to finish the first phase of the treatment. Now the patient is using this, uh, this aligner or maybe we may make a, an aligner, a new aligner maybe in three or four months, but use the aligner only for retention. Okay. <clears throat> for this reason, what is the idea? Very simple. The incisor proprioception guy try to get the, the, the occlusion in class one to control the growth of the mandible, to control the muscle, the trigoidal muscle, the masseter muscle, to control the eruption of the teeth, and to control for the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, and with the idea of Petrovic about the uh, about the servo system, or the natological or the um, stomatognatic system, like a like a like a system with the and the maximum control is the occlusal plane, the proprioception of the teeth. Classical patient of our office. Classical patient of our office. Very simple. Very simple. The idea is very simple. The patient present a class, a cross bite of the lateral incisor and a collapse, a not very, a simple collapse of the maxillary. Okay. Is possible to treat this patient with Invisalign kits, with aligners? I don't recommend. The idea is very simple. The first phase. Uh, the first phase, um, the first phase of the treatment is very simple. Only using something very simple, a, a, a quagelis, very simple quagelis. I like very much this treatment, and now, now, unfortunately, unfortunately, after the coronavirus, <laughs> because we need after the coronavirus, very simple and cheap. Treatment. I like very much the cheap treatment. I using a quagelis, very cheap. Put a lingual arch. Even I using the lingual arch um, omegas to move a little bit this uh, tooth to produce a little bit uh, intrusion. You can see the evolution of the case. Very simple. Four brackets, an utility arch, and now finish the, the first phase of the treatment and one year later one year later in this moment is eruptum 
the key nine, the upper key nine and second primrose. And now it's time to put the aligners. You can see the big attachment in the incisor to get a good stability to, this is the, the, the attachment uh, aligner to get a very good stability. And the, this is the, the attachment in the patient. Okay, the attachment in the patient in the right and in the left. To, and you can see now the K9 is in class one, premolar in class one, molar in class one. And in this part, only need to move a little bit the upper K9 and to put the upper K9 in class one. Okay, the evolution of the patient. Okay. And now is we are finishing. I uh, maybe next uh, two or three months. I hope I, you, I see the patient and remove all the treatment. For the reason we use one quahelis, one lingual arch, a very simple four brackets with an uh, utility arch, and using three, four, or five uh, al aligners. Okay, this is the aligners to finish it, the treatment after. The, the, uh, in the second phase of the treatment. Another patient, like, this is the patient uh, with uh, well, the present the problem of the caries here in this uh, second uh, temporary molar, class three, open bite. Okay, for typical treatment, rapid maxillary expansion in early mixed dentition using, in this case, we are, we are using the uh, rapid maxillary expansion with uh, the La Rosa system. I like very much. We bonding the, the appliance in the upper key, temporary canines and put bands in the second uh, molars, uh, temporary molars, okay? After the treatment, after the treatment, how was the evolution of the patient? Perfect. Now we are, finishing the treatment. And this is the, the, the occlusion of the patient. We get a very good occlusion at the level of the premolars and the canines. And you can see the end of the treatment. Okay, patient very happy. We are using only one appliance to rapid maxillary expansion. And after years and years after, at the end of the second phase of the, of the last, late uh, mixed dentition, we uh, put, I don't remember, maybe 10 aligners or less and finish the treatment. Another uh, uh, kit with a cross bite, uh, the main problem of this patient is the TMG, present sounds in the TMG and a little bit clicking, a little bit clicking in the right TMG. The, the, the patient present the crossbite here in the right and a shift to the mandible to the right. The first step is to try to put a uh, quahelis, but the patient presented a very, very, very narrow maxillary. It was very, very difficult to adjust the quahelis. And in this case, we decide to put a stainless steel, uh, steel alloy. 18 round and with four loops, one loop, another loop, one loop and one loop. This is an excellent appliance when you try to produce expansion and at the same time, the protrusion of the lateral incisor. I is very cheap, very, very quickly, and it's very comfortable for the patient. And this is the patient and finish, finish the the finish uh, uh, the treatment, finish the treatment, very, very, very simple the treatment. We use only maybe six months, nine months of treatment. Okay, and finish the treatment. Now it's time to the end part of the mixed dentition. The end part the, is eruption the canine, it's time to remove the, the temporary second molar, okay? 
okay. And now it's very important to adjust the occlusion. Why? Because the patient presents a TMG, a potential TMG, TMG problem. For this reason, the, the best option is a very simple ecological option. My option is this. I put with a CBCT uh, with an intraoral scanner, make a um, uh, design of the, 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 the path, of the path, the Camino, okay, the, the road for the K9 and for the premolar. Remove this premolar, move a little bit in the, in the study, in the digital um, screen, okay, with our program. Distalize the first premolar, this, remove this and put here to the eruption of the K9. In the right, in the left side, the same. It's very important to put a lot of attachment. It's very important to put a lot of attachment because we need to the stabilization of the alignment. And this is always a problem. You can see the evolution of the case. Very, very, very nice evolution from the front, very nice evolution. And this is the, the it not, it's not, Yet the situation is the situation three months ago, and suppose that to now the patient is in a class one, and we need for finishing only to put two, three, or four new aligners to end the occlusion. I think it's very, very nice this uh, this approach of treatment because it's very simple. It's very not is very expensive. Why? Because the idea is. The first phase of the treatment is in the early mixed dentition, only with brackets, wires, or guajelis. Second, we are finishing and to put only aligners in the second part of the second uh, of the, the, the late mixed dentition. The control of the of the proception, to control the growth, control, excuse me, control the central nervous system, control the trigeminal nerve, the trigeminal nerve control the muscle, the muscle control the TMG, and all control the growth of the patient. For example, cases like this, before and after the use of very, very, very simple treatment, very interesting, remove the rapid maxillary expansion appliance in McNamara, rapid maxillary expansion, remove this uh, appliance, and you can see now the canine, the premolars, the same, the same, and the same. We design, uh, we design a liner to get down the canine, get down the premolar, get down the second, the second premolar, and to get down in a class and very nice. Last one. This is the patient, and we prepare the next uh, aligner in this patient, and we have to uh, control the eruption of this K9 and the control of the eruption of this K9. Okay, okay, you can see the evolution of the patient. This is a colleague from my office to put this uh, this metal button. Uh, metal button to straightening the, the premolar because in many cases we use elastic change or use elastic or use a, a small button or a small screw to, uh, to, to change the, the align. And you can see here the patient, very simple, extract the second uh, molar, temporary molar, okay, and the rotation of this lateral incisor expansion to create the space for the right and the left K9. And now we put the um, attachment in the K9 to uh, control the rotation during the growth of this tooth. This. Okay, and now I am going to talk, uh, this is the, for finishing. Uh, and if you have a question, uh, it's possible to, no problem because I am going now to talk about, we are going to, 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 to talk about the 
mandibular class one. Is the mandibular class one? What is your, what what is your idea about this? One moment. What is your idea about the the mandibular class two? One moment. Okay, and okay, what is your idea about the the the, the it's a question? Do you understand? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. It's okay. Clear. okay. Yes, okay. we can hear. You need uh, questions about the about the, the first part of the. Um, I, I think, Professor, we will take the questions at the end uh, in the Q and A tab, and also they might uh, raise. Them ah, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, no perfect. problem. Okay, no problem, no problem. Thank you. Okay, and and we are talking about the about the class two, the class two. I like very much to talk about the class the the class two because. Uh, because for example, in class three, in class three, when we are talking about the class three, class three is very, uh, is very simple through the treatment because all the, the techniques, MBT, Damon, Strival of Friction, Ricket, Stroth, are in complete agreement. For the reason is very interesting. We are in complete agreement. Uh, for example, in our office, the treatment is very simple is most of the patient using rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask with McNamara system or with a different type of system. Maybe the most effective is in the primary and early mixed dentition. Uh, the great forward movement of the maxillary when we are combined with the facial mask with, and rapid maxillary expansion. Okay, we are using five or six hundred grams per side, about 12 hours a day, normally at most during one year. And according with Peter Nagan, the maxillary effect and the, the dental and the skeletical effect is about 60%. And mandibular, skeletical and dental effect is about 40%. For this reason, in my office, all the patients with class three malocclusion use rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask. Even in patients with mandibular problems. Why? Because according with Peter Nagan, the effect of the rapid maxillary expansion and the facial mask in the mandible, in the total treatment of the of the patient is close to 40 percent remember this case in the lower you can see another patient with a very severe class 3 rapid maxillary expansion facial mask and just what is the objective the protocol in my office very simple between eight and ten years rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask about one year, one year and a half. One year is enough. Okay, four, three or four years later, I, I don't like to use retention. I don't like to use appliances between the first and the second phase. Three or four years later, we evaluate the phase and the occlusion. When the phase in the occlusion is okay, we decide to treat the patient with conventional orthodontic. When the phase is not very good, but the occlusion is okay, uh, we, I recommend to the patient, to the patient, to the parents, to take a decision about the surgery or not, or camouflage. And when the phase in the occlusion is not very good or bad, I prefer orthognatic surgery. For this reason, this is the typical patient with class uh, three, treated the patient with, um, with rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask. Now, three years later, it's time to put brackets in the upper and the lower, even to finishing the patient with a class two elastics and the end of the treatment with a very good 
occlusion, a nice occlusion, and very good relationship between the maxillary and the mandible. Okay, in the, in, when the patient presents a problem at the level of the face, uh, depends of the, the quality of the life of the patient, the quality of the life of the patient, okay? And when the patient needs orthognathic surgery, I recommend to the patient orthognathic surgery. In general, I hate to camouflage the malocclusion when the malocclusion produces a very an aesthetic face. For example, this girl. The main problem of this girl is not the occlusion. The main problem of this girl is the face. For this reason, we recommend in this patient surgery to produce a mandibular setback and at the, late, the same time to produce an mentoplastia, to produce the mentoplastia and the mandibular setback. And you can see the effect, the spectacular effect, the profile of the patient of the our treatment. Another patient with an open bite, an open bite. Is possible to treat this open bite with screws without surgery? Yes, it's possible. But the problem is the face of the patient is not the occlusion. The face of the patient, when you treat this patient with orthodontic surgery, is completely they're different when the, the, the face of the patient before the surgery. You can see the change of face patient with the surgery was something spectacular. Another patient with a class three, is possible to treat this patient with extraction of the lower premolars? Maybe we decide with an emotech, with an emoca, the emotech to analyze this, the end of the occlusion of the patient, and the most important is the face of the patient. For the reason, the, the, the class three is the same if you are in the Roth technique, it's the same if you are in the Damon technique, it's the same if you are in the MBT technique, it's the same if you are in a classical tweet technique, it's the same if you are in the bioprogressive technique. It's very, very, very simple. What is the big problem in orthodontic? The big problem in orthodontic is the mandibular class two. And we have a lot of treatment mistakes. Why? Because the different schools of orthodontic, the different schools of orthodontic don't use functional appliance. And this is a huge problem because without functional appliance, it's not impossible, but this is very, very, very difficult, very, very difficult to treat the mandibular class two with success, okay? Remember that in the classical evolution of the orthodontic, are we adapting the appliance to the malocclusion or the malocclusion treatment to our appliance? In my opinion, the worst problem in the history of orthodontic is the different techniques adapting the appliances, the headgear, to the malocclusion. For example, headgear is very, I like very much the headgear, okay. But headgear was very popular. All the class two treatment is with the headgear. All the class two is a maxillary problem. But, even, for example, MBT, uh, 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 excellent, uh, excellent orthodontics, uh, Dr. Trevisi, Professor Trevisi, recommend to use functional appliance, for example, the twin block. What is the problem? In, I don't know what is the situation in Jordan, but in Spain, in Latin America, in the past was very popular to use functional appliance very early, maybe between the eight, eight and 10 years old, and finishing the treatment with fixes appliance about 12, 13 years old, and the complete treatment is four or five years. And this is a huge, huge problem. For this reason, 
<clears throat> what is the problem? The main problem is this. If you use functional appliance to stimulate the growth of the mandible, the theoretical stimulate the growth of the mandible, okay, if you put the, the appliance very early, okay, very early, well, this is a huge problem. And this is the because this is the puberal growth spurt of the mandible. The puberal growth spurt of the mandible is very late. And we are talking in boys about 13, 14, and even 15 years old. And in girls, about 12. For this reason, it's not a very good idea to put very early functional appliance to move forward the man. The second problem is this. This is a very popular treatment in my office. This is a class dental class two, dental class two, and very popular in my office to put brackets in the upper, to put brackets in the lower. And now when we are using thick super elastic, uh, thick uh, stainless steel wires, we are using the class two elastics. And with the class two elastic, uh, get a very nice class one, good uh, correction of the divide. Okay, nice. What is the big problem? The big problem is that 90%, 90% almost of the clinics in the world use the class two elastics only, only to correct, to correct the mandibular class two. Because in the mandibular class two is possible to correct to need to digitalize the upper molar. But the most important in the class two is to move forward the mandible, not the teeth, the mandible to move forward the mandible. Okay, the, I would like to show, to, to explain our idea about class two with this case. This is a patient with a class two division one. The main problem of the patient is the retrusion of the mandible um, present a functional shift of the mandible to the left, a cross bite here. Okay, okay, <coughs> okay. And I treated by my hands, I treated this patient, I start with a conventional treatment with stainless steel, uh, 90 by 25, 21 by 25, and put elastic class two with curve of SP in the upper, more class two elastic with, um, with a, a stripping, more a stripping, more class two, more a stripping and control of the friction, we are using this type of bracket. This is the scenery bracket from Rocky Mountain Authority Company. And the big advantages of the synergy bracket is the possibility to control the friction and the orthodontic tooth movement tooth by tooth. For example, in this case, we need the maximum control of the, of the canine, the upper right canine, and I ligate the scenery bracket in a figure of a, a X. Eight uh, in a figure of eight. Uh, in the this is a conventional, and if you need in the, in the synergy low low friction ligate the synergy only in the central wings. Okay, you can see the result. A very fast treatment, very nice result, very nice smile. The patient, the parents is very happy. But please check the complete disaster of the profile. Was a complete disaster. Okay, okay, this is a complete disaster of the profile. What was the problem? The problem was the attempt, the attempt of the correction of a skeletal class two only moving. Teeth. And this is a typical problem. 
intrusion of the upper incisor on, with the with the stainless steel uh, curve of sp protrusion of the lower incisor if you produce protrusion of the lower incisor and remember in many techniques like the miraculous uh, brackets uh, passive self ligating miraculous brackets do you understand what is the technique we are using you can see in a lot of patients, the lower incisor at the end of the treatment present a very protrusion of the lower incisor. Why? Because in this technique, you use a very bad control of the friction. It's a very nice uh, technique to align the teeth, only for aligning the teeth. But in the most difficult phase of the treatment is finishing the, the, the treatment with uh, the control of the torque. And for the reason, it, 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 at the end of the treatment, you put a, a, a class two elastics and produce protrusion of the incisor. Please remember this disaster. And what was the problem? According with Samir Bisara, when the mandibular growth is tending to grow the mandible anteriorly, the occlusion produce is providing a force system to perpetuate the class two. Why? Because the mandible, the mandible push the maxillary forward and the mandibular forward, the maxillary forward, excuse me, the maxillary push in a reverse effect in the class two elastics and produce a posterior rotation of the mandible. This is a complete disaster when the patient is a dolicocephalo patient. For the reason, Houston, we have a problem because most of the cases for the reason, people, uh, the Roth uh, guys and the Roth orthodontists say, uh, mandibular class two need orthognathic surgery. According with uh, profit, it's not possible to use functional appliance because the functional appliance only produce dental alveolar effect. Okay. <clears throat> mandibular class two, we have a problem. What is uh, the, uh, the, the first step? I don't have a lot of time to explain this because we need for the mandibular a complete change of mentality. The first step is not true. The classification of maxillary class two, mandibular class two, mixed class two is not true. The maxillary class two always, always is a dental alveolar problem. The mandibular class two always is a basal bone problem, okay? And it's completely different. We need a new classification. Why? Because the dental classification is very simple. Class two molar, canine, overjet, overbite, interincisal angle. But the facial class two is very difficult because it's a subjective, is in relationship with fashion. I don't like the classification, the academic classification, maxillary mandible mix, and I don't like, okay? I prefer to use uh, maxillary dental alveolar problem, and we need to treat the anterior guy and the dental alveolar rotation and distalization of the first, first molars. The next is the mandible and the vertical, okay? there is completely different a mandibular, a, cla a sagittal class two uh, problem than the vertical class two problem. I like very much this classification. This classification is in relationship with the syndrome. Syndrome. What is a syndrome? It's a set of a medical scenes and symptoms uh, are correlated with each other and often with a particular disease of this cell. For the reason it's possible to, to have, it's possible to have, a moment, a light class two or a severe class two. What is a light class two? It's a class two only 
with a molar problem. Next, molar problem and anterior guy problem. Next, maxillary problem. Next, muscular problem. Next, mandibular and body ramus problems. Next, chin problem. Chin problem is a huge problem. Why? Because chin is 100 genetic. 100 genetic. If the patient presents a retrognatic chin and the, is the morphology of the chin, the patient needs orthognatic surgery, even if the patient uh, is six years old. Uh, TMG problems and or craniofacial uh, or syndrome problems. For this reason, the molar class two, very important, adjust the molar, to know very well the, the role of the first molar in the, in the, in the patient, to know the Andrews uh, keys, to know the, uh, the ideal occlusion of according with, uh, with Andrews, the rotation, very important, the rotation of the first molars, the cephalometric analysis of the patient. For example, in class in the in the maxillary problems, I recommend always to start the treatment with maxillary expansion. Why? Because we need unlock, unlock of the malocclusion. We need unlock of the, the, the uh, we need to unlock the mandible and to move forward the mandible. And for this reason, the first step is to put uh, quahelis or to something to produce expansion. And next, the use of uh, a utility arch to control the anterior guy. Okay. I like very much, very simple treatment. Headgear is not a very popular treatment in our office because the patient and the parents hate the headgear. But headgear is very, very good treatment in the maxillary class two treatment. Why? Because it's very cheap. It's very cheap, producing expansion effect, produce a distalization effect, produce this rotation effect, produce an increase of the vertical effect, and this produce a lot of advantages. For this reason, I like very much. It's very important to finish in very well the cases and to engage the force molar. Okay, this is a, the, I don't use the headgear, but I think it's very important to analyze and analyze the use of the headgear, even in patient, because it's very cheap and the effect is very spectacular. Don't use very sophisticated and very expensive appliance because you can see this case. It's a, it's a class two, deep bite, collapse of the maxillary, and use only a headgear, only this is a headgear, only with the headgear and with very simple appliance is enough to treat this patient. Okay, another patient. The main problem of this patient is this. The main problem of this patient is the class two. First step, distalize the force molar. Second step, to close the space, the premolar and canine. What is the problem of this type of patients? We need a sliding mechanism. To a sliding mechanism, the best bracket is a passive self-ligating bracket. And the worst bracket is the conventional bracket. For this reason, I like very much the scenery because with the scenery, if you need in the upper incisor, the control of the torque is possible to ligate in this way. But if you need in this moment to move backward the canine, the premolars, ligate only in the center. You ligate only in the center, the canine and the premolars, and the friction is close to zero. It's close to zero.
another patient, very simple treatment, maxillary dental class two, very simple. Okay, what is the problem of this patient? The shift of the upper midline to the left. For this reason, what is the problem of the shift of the upper midline? Very simple. The problem is this. What is the treatment? The treatment is to put brackets in all white in the, into the mouth, to put brackets very fast, a coil spring. Now, the first step is to put the first upper molar in the correct position. In this case, we are using, we are using the we are using the upper uh, the, uh, pendulum appliance to distalize these molars. The end of the treatment, the end of the treatment, and you can see the, co the ideal correct position of the second upper premolar, of the second. More cases, class two, division one, dental class two, dental class two, not mandibular problem, dental problem. The ideal treatment for the dental problem of the class two is the class two intermaxillary elastics. In the technique, we combine in the anterior in incisor ligate in the figure of eight eh, to, to cross, to increase the torque, to control the torque during the retraction of the upper incisors and the king canines, in canines and premolars ligate in the center to get a very good sliding of the wire and move the wire to the back. Okay, very important in this patient with dental class two, please check the rotation of the molar, check the position of the second premolars and check the uprightening, okay, uprightening of the lower premolars and the upper premolars. The same here, a patient with a rotation of the upper molar, rotation of the upper molar, okay, we need to distalize the premolar, we need to distalize the premolar, okay, using a pendulum appliance, we use a pendulum appliance to court the first step is to correct the first upper molar. Now we are using intermaxillary elastic to engage the occlusion. Okay, very simple, very important. Now to move K9 and premolars to backward, we are using the finishing the treatment. And the most important is this. You can see before the treatment, the upper midline shift to the right with the crowding with a narrow maxillary. And now you can see the face at the end of the treatment with a very nice smile, with a very broad uh, arch. Uh, next, the same, quite it simple. Okay? Simple, because in this patient, what is the problem? The, la the problem is this. The problem is the canine, but we need to move backward the, the molar. The first step is a palatal bar to the control of the first upper molars. Next step, remove this more temporary molar, put the coil spring and night tie coil spring to distalize the, the latter, the premolar to produce a forward movement of the lateral incisor and to correct the cross bite of this tooth. Now it's time to put class two elastic because the patient present a dental problem. Okay, shift to the to the, the class two elastics and finishing the treatment. The same, the big advantages is this, the shift to the man, the, the upper midline to the right. Now we have a very nice upper midline without extractions and with a very nice control of the premolars and the canine. Another patient with a crossbite, okay? The crossbite in the right. And we need now, we need now to the crossbite, we put the elastic in the upper and in the lower. 
we use the coagelis to expand this molar and to control the expansion with this type of uh, uh, bypass arch wire and the end of the treatment. And you can see the nice smile of the patient, okay? Because the patient present a class two, dental class two, even in patient with different, with a collapse of the maxillary, with a problem in the maxillary, is we are using rapid maxillary expansion and a very good control after this rapid maxillary expansion, a very good control, a very good negative control of the molars and the premolars. Okay, remember this, the occlusion of the patient and remember the, the anglius, Andrius keys, the incisal angle, the, the, uh, uh, the inclination of the second order burns, the Monson and Wilson curve. And I like very much, for example, for the diagnosis of the class two, this diagram. This is a patient, okay? And this is the distance between the first molar and the pterygoidea vertical line. This distance is the age of the patient more three millimeters. And this is the distance between the molar and the lateral incisor is about 25 millimeters. When the patient present a rotation and initialization of the first molar, okay, increase the age and three millimeters, increase this distance and decrease this distance. What is the plan of treatment? The first step is to put the molar uh, backward to control the molar. For this reason, I like very much this diagram. For example, in the number one, the patient present class two in the right and class one in the left, okay? And this is the, according with this, only the problem is in the right, not in the left. Only the problem is in the class K9, class two in the right, not in the left. Over jet is normal, IMB is normal. The distance between the molar and the vertical line is increased only in the right side. For this reason, what is the treatment? Very, very simple. The treatment is only a, the treatment of one molar. You need to correct the more the first upper molar correct first the molar second the premolar and second and third the canine but in the third case class two in the right and in the left class two in the canine are right and left but the distance between the molar and the lateral incisor the distance is completely normal and the distance between the molar and the pericoidea line is also normal. For this reason, what is the problem of this patient with overjet increase? Class two in the right and in the left canines. The plan of treatment of this patient is to for move forward the mandible. Okay, to move forward the mandible. For example, in patient like this, with a protrusion of the maxillary, what is the treatment? The treatment is the use of the of the C modeler for Cervera to, pro, to correct the protrusion of the incisor, to correct the overjet, to, cor to control the growth of the mandible. And now it's time, and now it's time to finish the case. Remember this, the, the hypothesis, the Melvin Moss, the Melvin Moss hypothesis, the proprioception occlusal hypothesis for Petrovic, the connection between the mesencephalic nucleus and the change of the dynamic of the mandible, the relationship with the functional appliance and the appliance that is possible with this appliance to stimulate the growth of the mandible, okay? 
And you can see here, the, in many cases, it's possible to change the face of the patient with the rapid maxillary expansion. I like to, to use the rapid maxillary expansion in these patients, okay, to change the, to change the upper air whales, like in this patient with a maxillary collapse, we are using uh, the rapid maxillary expansion and expansion very fast the maxillary. And in my, in my office is very important the diagnosis of the patient. Remember also this, remember the tongue, the role of the muscle, okay, of the patient. Remember this, that this is very, very important and to understand how to work the functional, the functional appliances, okay? How to work the functional appliances. For this reason, uh, what is the philosophy of the treatment? The genetic? Sorry, sorry. Yes. we have five minutes. Okay. Do you know something? Sorry? Yes. Five minutes we have. Okay. One moment. One moment. And what is the, the for example, the treatment in our office, what is the, one moment, <laughs> the classical uh, treatment is this. One moment, well, okay. Okay, the idea is very simple, is this. We treat to, uh, with the functional appliance, stimulate the growth of the mandible, but at the same time, stimulate the alveolar bone, apical, apical, okay, to the teeth. Okay, this is the idea, to stimulate the alveolar bone here and here, and to stimulate, to stimulate the growth of the mandible. But remember, that is not true. It's not possible to stimulate the growth of the mandible, of the basal bone of the mandible, or only to stimulate the, the mandibular with the, the condyle. Uh, for this reason, in a patient, the treatment is the, to correct of the molar, second, to correct the divide, third, is to put functional appliance, okay? And this is the, for example, a patient put, we use the first step is to align the teeth, align to increase the overjet, increase the overjet to create the space to move forward the mandible. Uh, after we are, we use, uh, we use the, the twin block and we use the twin block, the digital or conventional twin block, at the same time that the brackets and the wires. Now is a new periodontal proprioception, stimulate the new periodontal proprioception, and now the patient present the jumping the bite. This is a concept from angle, from angle. Jumping the bite, the patient jumping the bite, now is in a, in not in a true, class one, is it like a false class one? But in this moment is the moment that we are using a, a lot of class two elastic, short and heavy. And with the use of this class two short and heavy elastic, finishing the treatment. And this is the retention because we start, we finish the treatment very early. We use like a retention, a functional appliance to avoid the relapse. This is the patient years later and the patient years, years later and more years later. Another patient, the bile collapse of the, of the mandible, retrusion of the mandible, if you analyze the nasolabial angle is a mandibular class two. Okay, this is the, the uh, our analysis or forecast for the treatment. The objective of this patient is the first step is to produce a protrusion of the upper incisors. 
because we need to move forward the mandible to avoid the disaster of the patient that we show it uh, at the start of the lecture. Okay, the idea is this. Okay, now we have to put to produce to uh, to okay to analyze the cephalometric analysis, maxillary expansion, control of the incisor guy, mandibular unlock, first jumping bite, second the use of functional appliance, second jumping bite, and finishing with uh, uh, the technique of alignment, leveling, closing space, and finishing with the straight wire, low friction with the synergy bracket. We use for this maxillary expansion equagelis, for the incisal guy uh, bypass arch wires, for the functional appliances of Frankel, Bimler, or another type of Frankel. We use the combination between the twin block, uh, the, excuse me, twin block, the bionature uh, with the, um, First, equagelis, second, the bionature with brackets and wires. And you can see here, finishing the treatment very fast. Okay, and you can see the face of the patient. It's completely different, this type of patient. We produce the first step was the protrusion of the upper incisor. The second point was the use of functional appliance to stimulate the growth of the dental alveolar growth of the mandibular bone apical to the teeth. The, this is the patient, and you can see the patient three years after the treatment with a very stable occlusion, with a very nice occlusion, with a very, um, with a very good uh, engage and very good dynamic occlusion. Uh, this is not a 100% uh, of stability, okay? Because in many cases, it's not possible to stimulate the growth of the alveolar bone or the, or the, or the mandible, but in our hands, the best result to treat patient with mandibular class two is the combination between the use of functional appliance and the fixes appliance, the ideal in the future is the digital functional appliance. This is the ideal for the future. Okay. Okay, I have more, more cases, but I prefer if you want uh, uh, questions, okay. Okay. Um... We have like one question, and I'm going to ask you the first question if you don't mind. Now, regarding the clear aligners, um, which age do you prefer to start in for children? And does this kind of manufacture, do you manufacture it in Europe? No, 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 I don't manufacture it. It's manufactured in a, in a company in Spain, in Malaga, in the city of Malaga. The name is uh, Alinea Dent. I don't have experience. Uh, of uh, to make to manufacture the aligners at home, okay? Because the main problem with the aligners at home is the price of the of the resin, okay? It's not very easy to to organize the the the, the aligners at home. Maybe in the future, with the depend of the price of the of the printing. Uh, the idea is if you are using, for example, a linear end, uh, excuse me, Invisalign, you have Invisalign kits. The idea of Invisalign kits is to put uh, all the treatment of the patient using only aligners. My idea is, is different. The idea is to, for, to put uh, in the first phase of the treatment uh, something very simple, to four brackets, one quagelis, one uh, lingual arch, and using only only the aligners in the last phase or in the last part of the mixed dentition. Immediately, uh, uh, immediately uh, before the um, the loose of the exfoliation of the second uh, the second um, temporary molars and before the eruption of the upper canine. Okay, let's go for the second question. It's uh, Dr. Riyad. 
let's unmute. Uh, uh, yes, I will do it just a minute. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Riyad, تفضل لو سمحت. Thank you for, for your lectures. Okay, thank you. Uh, first part is that your lecture, the, the title of it is to, to use a liner in children's, in mixed dentition, right? Only? Yes. Yes. So we have a problem with the adult, with the cooperation to use a liner. Yeah. When you, when you give a liner to children, usually you have a problem that they, they will not eat it. So instead of this, we can use, as you said, any type of fixed appliances and get, get the, the result. So there's no need to, to use a liner in mixed dentition and in, because the cooperation of the children is very difficult. To yes, use. The, yeah. The question is very simple. If you put aligners in children, the forces and uh, you put aligners with the idea to put the all the treatment with the with the aligner, the big problem is this is very unstable the aligner and the peep and the, the kids remove the aligner. But yes. we are talking about to put the aligner only during a very short period, maybe six months, one year even less because it's the between the, uh, the the loose of the second temporary molars and the eruption of the upper canine. It's a very short period. In this short period, it's possible to get a very good uh, retention of the liner. Even uh, in, in my, my experience with the liner in kids only in this period is very good. I okay. think that we can finish the case with fixed appliances and that's it. No, no, there's no need for aligners with the kids. The kids, they are uncooperative to, to, to use a liner. Yeah, we have this, this problem. The second part, that the second part of your lecture, you cover everything. You cover class two, class three, functional appliances, head gears. Nowadays, 90% of orthodontics, they don't use head gears, they use the implants. Distalization. I'm yes. with you. functional places with you. I'm also with you to use a face mask in young children's Robert Max expansion. But in the same times, you cover everything. This is Yanni. I don't think that uh, what you are dealing with is that what type do we have uh, this lecture? Is it lectures for early treatment or is it lectures for everything? I am sorry to say that. No, the question is, is very simple. The question is, the first step is, I use a lot of mini screws. In, in fact, I have mini screws. And I use a lot of mini screws. The lecture is, is two parts. The first part is about the mixed dentition. And the second part is the use, is the, the class two treatment in, in, in the class two treatment. In my office, we treat the patient of class two with functional appliance and fixes appliance at the same time. Another question is the cooperation. Okay. In my office, I, in my office, I have, I use a lot of functional appliance and I don't have problems with the functional appliance. A lot of people uh, uh, talk about, I have a lot of problems with the kids because the kids don't use the appliances. It's not possible to put removal appliances in the kids or it's not in my, in my, in my office. I have a good, uh, because the main problem in orthodontic today is how to move the mandible forward without functional appliances. Not with, uh, uh, with uh, for, because forthus or another type of appliances like forthus that produce a dental alveolar protrusion of the lower incisor. This is the, the this is the, okay. the, the question. Dr. Shadi, Fadlan, Dr. Shadi, do you send to Al? Dr. Shadi has a question. Shukran. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Majd. Uh, you. And thank you, Dr. David, for the uh, informative presentation as always. Um, actually, there was a question in the Q&A tab, but I think it was this similar to Dr. Riyadh's uh, question, so we'll consider this answered. But I do have a question of my own, if you don't mind. And it's also regarding the uh, treatment of uh, uh, kids in the mixed dentition with the aligners. 
So you mentioned uh, that you actually reproduce the um, the shape or the size of the unerupted teeth uh, mm. during the mixed dentition as you're treating with aligners. So um, can you just give us a, a brief, quick note about how uh, you actually um, reproduce accurately the actual yeah, yeah. And size? And, and do you actually have to take... Uh, uh, rescans or new impressions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the question is very simple. The question is, uh, it, there is two possibilities. The yes, first yes. possibility is more sophisticated, and you can see here with the, uh, and the, the first question is, if you, is the ideal, the ideal is, um, the ideal is to use a CBCT, okay, you take the foot, the, you take the, 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 the shape of the teeth. Another, another very simple, is to, to take the, the opposite tooth or to use a tooth very similar in the shape in a bank of tooth and to put in a bank of tooth and to more or less to put the more or less in the space for this tooth. Okay, it's possible. Mm -hmm. The ideal is with the CVCT, but it's not necessary. It's possible nice. to put with a bank. Uh, for example, imagine that you, you have the, the eruption of the first premolar in the upper. It is possible to use the force premolar to create the shape of the canine. Yes. Okay, but it, is, is this really accurate towards the later stages of the treatment when you want to fine tune the position of the tooth? Uh, does yeah, have more or less, more less because finishing? you need more space. If the canine, the measurement of the canine is eight millimeters, you need to put more or less 10 or more, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. David Suarez, for your beautiful lecture uh, tonight. Thank you. It was our real pleasure having you twice this month. <laughs> Hopefully, we will meet you soon. Okay, have a nice uh, evening. And uh, uh, my dear colleagues, thank you very much for attending tonight. Uh, happy Ramadan. Ramadan Kareem. Inshallah, we'll see you in the next year. Dr. Thank David, you. Thank you very much and happy Ramadan. Okay. Thank, thank, you, you, so thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. We'll be ending the meeting now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Thank you.